All right, welcome back to Market Day Report. I am Scott Shelley, the otherwise known as the Cow Guy. It's Friday, and we've got some good numbers, so pretty good to see the green across the screen on a day like today. It was a rough week Tuesday and Wednesday. <laughs> Those two days felt like it was a rough week altogether because they were so long. But why don't we see how we're doing right now? If we bring up a corn chart, that'll tell us. 21 and a half cents higher in SEP. That's pretty good. 630 and a quarter. We're on the highs there, folks. 630 and a half is the high. So got a little bit of rocket juice in this one right now. December, the new crop up 22 and three quarter cents, well above $6 at 619. And that's a new high. All right. Oh, that feels good to say that. I do know a lot of the producers out there. We still have our family farm. A lot of break evens in the country between that 550 and $6 level. So we're not in business to break even. We want to make some money, and these prices are going to definitely, definitely help. All right, how about wheat? Let's take a look at Chicago wheat. 49 cents higher in the SEP wheat, Chicago. 885 and a half. About not even a penny off the highs there, folks. Uh, 47 and three quarter cents higher in Dece. That's 899 and a half. Half cent away from the high. Nine bucks is the high. Okay, that makes me smile. How about uh, hard red wheat in Kansas City? I'm shamelessly uh, cheerleading, and I, I hate to say it because I, we have a farm. I've gotten out of bed every day on the producer's side for the last 50 years, so I'm pre-apologizing, all right? How about SEP up 49 cents to 9.38 and a quarter? That's a half cent off the highs there in the hardwood wheat in Kansas City. March, going out the deferreds, 46 and a half cents higher to 9.48 and a half. Actually, just a new high, 9.49 and three quarters in that March. Boy, oh boy. How about spring wheat and... Minnesota, 54 and a quarter cents higher in SEP, 988 and three quarters. That's some pretty good going up there. We still have room to the upside there, though. Boy, 50 and a half cents higher in March, 1008 and three quarters. I like saying things with a 10 handle in front of it. Cotton, cotton was higher and it still is. We've got a 329 point rally going over in that D's contract to 95, spot 17. All right, let's bring back in or bring in Todd Horowitz with Bubba Trading. I think Todd's probably in Chicago, maybe. I don't know. Yes, Chicago. All right. <laughs> Uh, um, thanks for coming on on a, on a Friday, Todd. I know you're a busy man, and uh, you got to get down to the tavern. Um, <laughs> what are your What are your thoughts here about this latest? Uh, I call it the inflation exodus, but I don't know. Maybe you've got a better idea of what's going on. Uh, first of all, in 25 years I've known you, you've always had a smile on your face, so that's a good <laughs> thing. But I think that the markets are reacting, as you and I talked about on Monday. We thought that the big selling would probably lead to a rally. We found some support around six dollars in corn. Around you know around eight dollars in wheat and, and at about fourteen fifty in beans and sure enough the buyers came back now I'm I'm very concerned still about the deflationary scenario that I think is out there the Fed is 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 already you know again they're, they're, they never have done it right in the entire history of the Federal Reserve as far as I'm concerned so I think that's a problem and you know we get a natural bounce but I'm concerned the lack of volume and the participation is really light but it is the, you know it is that kind of weird time of year in between you know the planting and harvest so we'll see but i'm not i'm i like them i think over time but at this point we're still pretty negative you like them but you can't trust them is what i'm thinking you're saying there but i think that that's probably right because of what's i mean we're all going to be a little bit battered and bruised going home today because we've kind of as they say been shell shocks you know we all have ptsd from what this market's been doing <laughs> for the last three or four days right and then you know I, I thought I saw it really starting to happen over in the equity market. I rolled into like the bonds and, and the fixed income started to really get beaten up. And it wasn't too, too long after that that we really saw a downdraft. And it was a lot of that money that came in for that inflation trade. They all left at the same time, same day, and kind of got us really going there. So um, I want you to stick around. Wait a few seconds here. We're going to go away. We're going to pay some bills. We're going to come back and talk more with Todd Horowitz with Bubba Trading. He's in Chicago. We'll be right back after this. All right, welcome back to Market Day Report. I am Scott Shelley, and they call me the cow guy, and the cow guy is a great, cheap, easy segue into what these livestock markets are doing. Why don't we take a look at cattle, because that has something to do with the cow guy. Uh, live cattle, look at that board. Um, quiet, right? We've had an okay range, but we're just not too far from home. August is only off 40 cents to 134, spot 15, and that's about 35 cents off the lows. February out the deferreds is sharply unchanged, but if you make it out to April, we do squeeze out a little bit of a gain, about 12 cents to 153.52. All right. How about feeders? They've got to deal with a higher corn board, and they're dealing with it pretty well, if you ask me, actually. August is off 45 cents to 172.02. And we've got, say, even November out the deferreds, it's off from just 90 cents to 180, spot 77. The belly of the curve there is taking it on the chin a little bit, I guess, a buck, a buck 15. But still, not a bad board considering how high corn is today. 
How about lean hogs? Well, lean hogs are scratching out again. 25 cents higher in August to, to 109 spot 75. Go out the deferreds to December. That's up a buck and a quarter to 86.52. That brings us back to our guest analyst, Todd Horowitz. He's in Chicago with Bubba Trading. Todd, anything stick out of you when we talk about livestock? We've got about two minutes. No, I think we're pretty much uh, fairly priced, Scott. I don't think there's a lot of room. I, I think if there's a surprise, it's going to be lower. And obviously, that will tie into a lot of things you've already talked about. But I, I don't think you're going to see a dramatically much higher prices. I mean, feeders at, you know, 175, 180. Bats at you know 135 to 140, and, and hogs in between. You know, depending on what month you want to look at, but let's say the current 105 to 115. I don't think there's a lot of room to run here. I think that you know if anything we could see lower prices, but certainly we could remain steady. And I think that's what we've shown for the last couple of weeks is steady trade and not a lot of real activity. And I think that's what you're going to continue to see unless something breaks badly. How about the idea that uh, the Fed overshoots, uh, they raise rates too much, they kill the consumer, they kill the economy, they throw us into a recession. What does that do to these products? I think it hurts them badly. I think this is, again, this is what we're worried about is the handling of the way the inflation curve is going. You know, we didn't have to be in this position, as you I and I have agree. talked about. I agree. So oil, there's a whole bunch of reasons why. The Fed will screw it up. You can bet on it. It's happened in every time in history. And there's no reason to create free money you know, you can't get people to work. I mean, you know, we had a jobs number that looked positive. It's not that positive. You got to look at the right numbers. So I, I don't think we're going to see any dramatic price rises in cattle. I think that they probably reached a peak. Now, I wouldn't say they're going down, but I'm certainly not bullish that they're going a lot higher either. Yeah, well, I mean, uh, there's probably a lot of people out there thinking what you're thinking. And I'm thinking that this economy is on a precipice. I'm getting worried about it. And I know that we had a, a, there, it's going to be deemed an OK jobs number today. But I, I, I still think if you pull that over and take a look under the hood, you're going to be surprised about how bad things really could be. All right. Thank you very much. Thanks, Todd Horowitz, Scott. bring it back to me. I'm Mr. Doom and Gloom, maybe they say sometimes. But I'm going to give you I'm going to pass you over to somebody that's got some sunshine coming out. And that's Suzanne. <laughs>